Everybody, welcome. This is Band of Badgers. There, I, I'm Dave, your host. I was gonna say, I was gonna say DM then. That was the wrong thing to say. Hi, I'm, I'm your host. I'm, I'm Dave. There's Steve number one, and also Steve number two. I'm gonna give you a finger pistols look. There he is. How, how are you? How are you doing, Steve? He's, Steve, by the way, is all the way from uh, Become Studios. It's the first time we get to actually chat to a computer game company here, so really, really excited. You'll be able to tell that from my things going off here like this. Um, really excited. <laughs> Steve, thank you for joining us. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on board. Um, Always. This is very exciting. Happy to. I, I love it. I mean, I, we, we done, we've had a, a previous chat before um, mm -hmm. earlier in the week. And uh, as I said to, to many people, I was just talk, chatting to a load of badgers as well. Um, Steve is probably just as big a geek as I am, which is fantastic. So we were <laughs> geeking about everything and every, anything. Um, it's always good to, f to find someone who uh has a background in gaming but mm -hmm. generally affectionately loves rpgs gaming adventures stories everything um so actually having someone who is fully immersed in it and then creating these games uh, i think goes a long way i think one of the things i've seen with, with games and game companies is uh the people who are not into it people are making games for the sake of making games uh, a lot of triple a titles out there can be like that so when you have someone who has their heart and soul into uh, role-playing games like yourself. Um, I love that. So you can bring all that into it. Um, so that, that's a very big introduction for it you. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nice and easy. Um, so to our audience, thank you so much for joining us. If you have questions for Stephen for Become Studios, uh, we're going to find out more about them now. But we are going to be talking about a little bit about their history mm -hmm. and about two specific games coming up, which, we, which is Pathfinder Abomination Vault and Pathfinder Galaspire Survivors. Yes. And uh, so do put your questions into chat. Steve's here. Steve number one is here. And he will handle all of the questions and bring them up on screen for us. But Steve, just to get started, um, what's, a, what's a, a little bit about you and uh, a little bit about Become Studios, your role at Become Studios? OK, OK. So um, I'm a game director at uh, Become Studios. I've been in the games industry uh, for 20, uh, going on 21 years now uh, in various forms and capacities, always in sort of a game design or narrative design uh, capacity. I've worked. Uh, my first game was uh, uh, Kasparov Chessmate for Palm Pilot. That's how that's I how remember the Palm Pilot. Pilot. Yeah. So I, <laughs> my first games were for Pocket PC and for Palm Pilot. And then we, you know, I dabbled in educational flash games and then um, you know, some some stuff for the uh, Nintendo Wii and then mobile games when that became, you know, of yeah. course, uh, a huge industry changing thing. Um, and, you know, here I am now at uh, Become Studios working on this uh, very cool Abomination Vaults uh, project. Um, I've came into uh, game design kind of, I mean, a little bit by surprise. I, mm -hmm. my, my, my degree was in creative writing. I had, you know, ambitions, authorial ambitions, playwriting ambitions. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should play it safe and I should be a teacher. And then I met uh, a colleague of mine who was a, a classmate of mine who was a technical writer. I went, ooh, nice. technical writing, maybe I can do that. So I was a technical writer for uh, four to five years running and then, yeah. You know, during times of industry turmoil, <laughs> which we kind of find ourselves well, in, then yep. way back when, in like 2000, uh, 2002, I was like, I I found an opportunity at a game design company, and I was able to merge the hobbies with, yeah, documentation skills, and that's how I sort of came up 
into, that, into that. that so i just never left <laughs> once i found it because cool, we, were, we were talking before we went on air and i said how people start this thing you, and and i was nearly right you said playwright but i said author of like fantasy books or something i was like, like so, is yeah. it <laughs> what do i give off but yeah <laughs> you, 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 had me, you had me clocked right from the uh, right from the start yeah it's, it was the clue is probably the typewriter but there i you was going to say uh, that was a, that was a clear typewriter <laughs> it is however it is a lego typewriter i want to say it's really it's I mean, nerdy and not functional though this is the lego ideas uh lego typewriter i have not but, seen that wow uh it's super cool uh i mean just that you can't really see it. there's it all the keys launch one hammer and then you could things yeah. turn and the the carriage returns and stuff like that and then uh my youngest son uh shifted all the keys around to spell his name and waited patiently for three months <laughs> for me to notice and so now i can't change it back because <laughs> yeah it's now done yeah. it's, it's perfect the way it is it's there. the heck yeah. with dvorak or qwerty now i have <laughs> gavin as my as my my touch typing so we, we've become studios. You've joined them um, uh, in 2023. Was that correct? That's right. Yeah, I joined them. Yeah. In, um, I joined them in January of 2023. Cool. And they've been around. I mean, uh, become studios have been around for what nearly 30 years as well. So, yeah, yeah, uh, 27, 28 years. I'd known about them. Uh, the industry in, in in Montreal of Quebec yeah. is um, you know is is quite close knit. So I had cross paths with them uh, multiple times former colleagues of mine had worked uh, mm -hmm. worked at the studio so you know i knew uh, i knew how much fun they were and then yeah. uh, the time is right so i you know joined them and, and started working on uh, very cool projects with very cool people cool i like it there's a there's a they cover a lot of things i've got some bits and pieces here so i'm i'm gonna read this out but we've got we've got some bits and pieces on the show reel so those of you who saw yeah. the opening trailer uh, that is the the become uh, show rule, and it covered one of the things is um, magic. Yes. So one of the upcoming games, magic. You got uh, Sunday Gold, and also Towers from Candle Keep, which we were talking about again earlier yeah. in the week. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff with that, and some of that stuff in the show rule. The stuff at the end, there was something there was like a, a VR AR game. Yeah. What that looks incredible. So I don't know what that is. I need to find out more about that because um... I, I do too. Because it, I mean, I've, I've I've been to the office. I've seen the table where that part of the show reel was uh, shot. Yeah. This is is before my time, but it was really interesting just to go into the experimental technologies of uh, of, of yeah. getting to VR and AR early and put things together is a uh, is an awful lot of fun. I I I'm I'm see in my head I'm also a big Star Trek fan, and when when you had the the holodeck when Star Trek introduced yeah. the holodeck. That's what I believe. That's why I want VR to go to. And we're, yeah. we, we, there are some big studios out there who do this thing where you, general public can come in and put on the headsets and you, you're not tethered anymore, you're free roam. Mm -hmm. and I think all this modern technology that's coming out now in, in another five to 10 years, wow, what a game's going to be like. Because they are going to be, yeah, you're going to be in the games. And that's the, the thing I'm, I'm looking forward to most. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. Same thing. So, uh, again, we're just going to send out a reminder to the audience. The questions you have, do stick them into chat. Uh, Steve, number one, can I can favorite them, and then we'll bring up on the screen. If you have any questions, for those of you who who wrote in, wrote in like it's a postcard or something. For those of you who sent in your questions, we'll we'll ask those as we go through. Uh, a lot of you sent in the same questions, similar questions, so we're going to get those answered as well. But we're going to jump straight in with some bits and pieces. We are looking at Pathfinder Abomination Vaults. Yes. Now, uh, for those of you who watch badges, Steve number one, again, is GMing us. He's taking some badges and some guest badges on this Pathfinder adventure, which is amazing. It's a three book uh, Pathfinder. Uh, what would you call it? Uh, adventure Path, isn't it? Adventure Steve? Path. Yes, it is an adventure path. And it is, it's stunning. There's a lot of stuff there. Uh, we've, we're we fairly early on in the adventure. We're hitting a load of zombies. Uh, we're playing it tomorrow, actually. We've got zombie hordes that's just come out of the graveyard. We're really looking forward to it. But it is a dungeon mega crawl. Um, and I love it. So what, we, what we're going to do, um, we won't show the trailer just yet. Steve number two. <laughs> we're, we're, we're over there now. <laughs> Steve N. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Steve N, there we go. Um, what we're going to do is let's have a talk about why. Um, so there's a partnership with Pezo. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. What what made you guys choose Pezo and why Abomination Vaults? Is that is that ah. the first one and it, and why Abomination? Okay, so uh, well, I mean, again, uh, we Pezo has been has Pezo has been doing uh, great work for a huge number of years. You know, personally, 
you know, I'm a fan. People at Become yeah. Studios are, are tabletop role playing game fans, so we know of the we know of the great depth of world building and uh, and gameplay yeah. that's in there. So we're just excited to uh, to go to go play in that. I don't know how the communications happened that, um, uh, but we're, we 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 chat with them all the time. So I'm glad that we have that. Uh, I'm glad that we have that relationship. And Abomination Vaults is is like really good it's like straight i mean it carries on nicely from the beginner box right yes the, yeah. uh, the initial yeah. o- otari adventure we, we stay in otari that's really interesting it, it it's uh mega dungeons are always are always super fun they're always good material you know for like a video game adaptation because well you know sort of form follows function right so you uh it lets you explore and be inventive, but within a, within a within a cool range of um, of possibilities. And this one is like every level, is, every floor is completely uh, is completely different. There are surprises cut through everywhere. It doesn't play yeah. like uh, other dungeon crawls that I you know would have played earlier on as a kid, and like you know the AD and D days yeah. or you know. Even in third, even in third edition, like the the world's largest dungeon or things like that, it just it, it's got it's got a really cool story behind it, embedded in the mm-hmm. uh, embedded in the world, and itself is just it's really fun to see the progression and the thematic progression as you start <laughs> from fairly innocent ruins. I described it once as like a Scooby Doo adventure that ends with the end of the world. Like it starts at one level. I am sorry for spoilers. <laughs> no, 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 no. Spoilers, oh, spoilers is good. We're, we're, we're playing it. We haven't, we haven't discovered that yet, but it's good to know it's coming. We have, for, for the other players who are playing in Steve's game, uh, yeah, you've been forewarned. Uh, we did, we did kind of suspect this, but um, yeah, big, uh, so the, the story for Abomination, you can, you can both answer this one. What, what's the kind of, for those of you who, ha- who don't know Abomination, uh, what's the setting picture? Steve, number one. What what sold Abomination to you? Because you're running this game, and what are you hoping to see in the computer game version? So I, I chose to run it because um, you can play with specific elements of the story to, to play the game you want. You could take it to a pure dungeon crawl if that's the way you want to play it, or the way I've chosen to do it is is up the horror um, and. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so th- there are there are, later on there are a lot of elements of uh, body horror specifically, and I think we had that discussion in session zero. Um, so I've gone that route with it, and I've tied that into your backgrounds about the whole mm. um, fears you have and feeding off the fear and, and using that as the power for the lighthouse and stuff like that. So I, I've taken that route. That's why I chose it because it it's in that box to certain extent it's in the it's in the dungeon box you don't have to worry about wandering all over the world like some of the other um uh, adventure files do mm-hmm. and it was something that you could just take from away from a, just a normal dungeon crawl and, and 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 do something a bit different with it that's why i liked it cool and i i hope those those horror elements and and some of that story come through in the game you know because there are there are uh, i think we talked about it, uh, during um, the the pre stream, there are parts of the dungeon that that tell that story. Uh, the haunts we had one in our last session actually um, may not have been that obvious. But one of the haunts at the, at the bottom of the of the lighthouse tower uh, tells part of the story because that's where Bill Bill Cora is killed. And Stephen, so what, is is any of that reflected in in the game at all as you see it, or have you taken a completely different in a so, different direction? uh you know that's that's hard to say so the horror aspect is definitely appealing all the yeah. way through so we're we're we're, we're leaning to that again you know with sort of a a, a a gauzy spoiler wording over it but the elements the horror elements that are that are present throughout are definitely there i uh i really enjoy tales of generational revenge so yes. the, just the, the the basic pitch of you know belcora <laughs> having been so monstrous subdued defeated by the rose guard and then you know <laughs> all of a sudden the light springs up again and wanting to investigate that that's a rich vein of, of yeah. storytelling particularly now uh, compared to compared to 
how I would play it around the table with uh, friends where we, you know, we make our own characters and things like that. We also get to tell this story um, in reflection through the iconics, because we, yep. in, the, in the video game, you're going to be controlling a team of, uh, of four iconics, right? Ezra, Namiri, uh, Harsk, and Kyra. Uh, yep. there we go Ez and, Ezrin oh. is my favorite Ezrin the wizard I've been playing wizards for the past few years and Ezrin is my absolute favorite even the graphic novels that Pathfinder produced oh yeah uh, that they, they were amazing with uh, Dynamite um, absolutely great he's, he's my number one character um, yeah. and I know uh, there's some fans Josh out there if you're watching this or when you're watching this Hask is back um, we played Rise of the Rune Lords you see for okay. uh, nearly well a year and a half uh, to two years we, we did that as a live stream and uh, that was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, his his character was based on Hask. He's like the twin brother. There you go. <laughs> <He's gonna laughs> no review. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so uh, I think it's really interesting to see. But yeah, that cast of characters will bring up these slides again. Um, I, I think there's a lot there, and you get to play these as well. That's right. So you control the uh, you control the squad. Yeah. So you know you're playing. You know if you're playing solo, then you're switching in between them and the. Um, and, and, and when you're not controlling them, they're doing their own thing. But what's fun is this is designed for a co-op experience, a gameplay experience. So, you know, you and up yeah. to three friends can go in and, uh, you know, make your choices about who wants to control what, and then, you know, go through this as a team and explore. And uh, there, we're having a lot of fun um, exploring different ways of communicating story and personality uh, of the characters through the game. So, you know, how they react to things, you know, uh, Harsks. Uh, reaction to uh, being wounded or helping somebody will be different than Ezrin's will be different. It will be different if Ezrin helps Amiri versus if Kyra helps Ezrin. So we're, we're, we're yeah. really mining these characters through here and putting them in, you know, some, some pretty difficult uh, situations uh, through the game and growing characters that way. So if you, I mean, that's the goal. There's, they're so, they're so good that I want to, you know, make sure that we, on a, on a narrative side like you know do right by them for the yeah to reflect this to, so that their growth reflects the story it's kind of yeah we uh uh yeah i just they're such cool characters i love ezra i was uh I, I love his origin of like starting late into the adventuring life i think that's yeah. really cool i like harsk's story i like um amiri's um uh, kind of self-exile <laughs> and <laughs> longing to return home because you know she was you know um she has a she great kept story one-upping she... everybody uh and just because she's that cool <laughs> and we're also not... playing um uh in, in, a, in another game we're also playing kingmaker so the anniversary okay. edition of kingmaker from pathfinder yeah. and and amiri has made a guest appearance in that already and that's been nice. a lot of fun to actually play and, and see but but that's why i like these iconic characters from pathfinder that the peso have done uh, and they do it for starfinder as well because you get to see them every now and then. Uh, yeah. They're not people you you don't get to interact with. You, you can you can play them as well if you want to. Yeah. Let's have a look at. We've got um, uh, a kind of a sneak peek at a trailer. So we've got some cut scenes. We've got some animation. Mm -hmm. We've also got some gameplay. But I am going to stress to people because um, it's one of those. The it's, it's not it's not a health notice. It's one of those things to say. Gameplay may change. <laughs> um, the the game. Uh, I think we said we, the game isn't going to be due until twenty twenty five. So anything can happen between now and then, because as we know, anything can happen in the next half hour. So let's put it on. If you have any questions, stick them in chat now. Okay. And when we come back, we've got about a, a, a minute long trailer to show you. There is some gameplay. Um, you know why I'm worried is because there's a giant spider. We'll, come, we'll talk about that on, on, the, uh, on the other side, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. Here you go. Look at this. Check this out. It's amazing.
I mean, that is stunning. That is stunning. Um, that is absolutely the music on that is incredible. We have to talk about oh, some yeah. of the music choices as well. Oh, I mean, God. that was a that was like boom, boom, boom. That was amazing. Um, but if everyone who knows me, you saw the giant spider. Ugh, that was horrible. Uh, but how big are these creatures? <laughs> because no, that's why. That's why. <laughs> but, but also not. <laughs> we, we, exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, that's huge. That mm -hmm. thing is is absolutely huge compared to the character size. What? Yeah. How? How can they? Is this? Do you need all four players, all four heroes to go toe to toe? Is that like a level ten encounter? Is that level one? I mean, I how mean, bad are I we going to go? I, I mean, obviously that would obviously that would be telling. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, we're, if, yeah. We're, if we're bringing all four in, we want to make sure that all four uh, heroes aren't doing just mopping up their own corners of the of the screen. But you know, there are very good reasons to come together and uh and uh, use teamwork and combos to uh, to get through some of the bigger <laughs> some of the bigger things that you might see yeah that i mean steve what is the is there a best bit for you i mean you that's the second time you've seen that one steve one uh first actually all the way through oh, any, I, any I, best bits? I saw, you know, um i i like the huge white spider actually <laughs> <laughs> well, no you, you like it yeah uh, yeah I, I like it i, I, I don't like it because that, yeah. it's a spider but there we go i i actually like the story at the beginning because that is a really good way of convincing that oh you know uh foreshadowing of the whole thing uh, and that's what that's the, we were talking about last night actually. i i like foreshadowing what comes next i yeah. really get a kick out of doing that and um yeah i was going to ask about npcs and you could see the rose guard there in that in that one shot where they were killing yeah. Melkora. and you can see the rogue being shot across the room clearly taking a mortal wound that is otari spoiler alert he gets killed uh which is why otari is named otari um but in, in you know again spoiler alert you get to meet the ghost of otari um so oh, cool. is that in the game <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be really cool if it is. I mean, have you got have you got a plan from mechanic to have NPCs in there? So I mean, we're going to have uh, you know NPCs for the for the living, of course, uh, in Otari, mm -hmm. the present, because um, Otari will be the hub of yes. uh, of a lot of the of, of a lot of the activities. Now, oh, it's so hard to talk around uh, talk around spoilers, but you know, the Ghost of Otari is a is a, is a really significant moment um, in the game and unlocks uh, solutions to future future puzzles and and and. It's really, um, it's really vital. So we're 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 finding ways to, we're finding ways to do that. That's part of the experimental fun of uh, yeah, of game yeah. development. So we know, you know, uh, the narrative beats that we want to hit, and we want to make sure that these bits of story get communicated. And then the trick is just picking the right way to convey it uh, yes. through that. That was so elegant in the uh, in the trailer to show the mortal wound that it was. It looked dramatic if you didn't know, and if you did know, you were like, ah, that's amazing. Yeah. So we yeah. want to have that kind of duality um, in everything that we do in the game. Um, yeah. As a as a as a game designer, which is I guess scratches the same itches as a, as a DM in a way. I love foreshadowing too. This is yeah. something that is 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 really good because with the right foreshadowing, as you're as you're playing playing, you uh, um, you know you feel clever, right? You 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 put together clues, and so you are. Mm -hmm properly terrified but not overwhelmed by the things that come out and you know surprise you uh, later on if you put the pieces together so i like trying to thread those i like trying to th uh, thread those needles for um yeah. so, for the player experience so you you as the game director do you get to kind of do all put your kind of fingers and toes into all the bits and pieces and help to bring it across so uh kind of so i mean it's game dev so it's 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 a huge yeah. team effort and so there are uh, creative leads in a variety of disciplines art leads these are just overall uh creative and storytelling uh yeah. programming uh qa it all it all matters so i'll as, so i'm sort of in the the design side of making sure that the systems that we have in the game reflect the themes of the story that we want to tell and the yeah. and uh, properly represent the property you know that we're working with the story we want to make sure that we that we do no harm that we make all the necessary adjustments because it's an action RPG and it's not, it's going to play very differently than how you would play it around the table, but yeah. make sure that everything makes sense. So I do get to poke around a little bit and communicate with all the disciplines and ask impossible things to the programmers and maybe have them surprise me because they do mm -hmm. all the time. They're wizards and like the art team <laughs> was amazing what they did in the, you know, what they did in the trailer and they're continuing to push. So, so it's a I'm, lot of fun to gonna... see everything. I'm just going to step back one slide, so please, please we're 
you want to call it up. So you, your art team has, um, in my opinion, improved infinitely on, on the Abomination Vaults logo from the original. That is a thing of beauty. I, I, I'm not enamoured with the Paizo one. I, I think it's a little bit dated. It looks like, but that, that is a great logo. So as opposed to... Yeah. On the adventure, that would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think some of them are listening right now, so that's good to know. <laughs> uh, I think Sorry, we used a similar just... logo treatment for uh, for Gallowspire survivors as well. I think we're, yes. we're sort of yeah. looking at that, and you know, again, um, having having kind of like a consistent approach and recognition. I mean, I'd love for people to look at this and go, "Oh, yeah, clearly it's a." This type, this logo treatment reflects this type of game fair, this type of, uh, of packaging. I don't know actually if that logo is at, at all similar to uh, what happens with the uh, with the Alcat games. It's a thing that uh, it's an interesting. It's an interesting question. Logos are very nerdy, but they're a thing that I love. <laughs> it is. It is. The, the, one of the questions you mentioned um, all the bits and pieces you get involved with. We had a question here from the McGuire Review, uh, who's also Haas, uh, mentions. Uh, what game? What game are you most excited about from a gameplay perspective? And that, that's about Gallo Spires and Abomination Vaults. But I'm mm -hmm. going to twist that question and say, sure. what part of Abomination Vaults are you most excited about? What What was new to, or from the story you was able to put in? And then his his second question here is, uh, what innovative new mechanics have really excited you? So, have you been in, able to introduce something that the team have never done before into this particular game? So we're putting out, so, uh, you know, couch co-op, four player co-op or, or yeah. up to four player co-op and, um, uh, having, having strong identifiable combos between, uh, the characters, you know, in its simplest cases, yeah. like these are, these are, everybody gets their own fastball special to like really sort of yes. boil it, boil, to boil it down. Developing that system, uh, is easy to say it's hard to pull off and make, and make seamless and we're. You know, and that's that's the the innovative gameplay that we're really that we're really going into. Yeah. So dramatically, I want to see the characters grow and communicate and have their relationships change with each other. As you know, yeah. as Rim, you know, will start them off as a little more inexperienced. You know, comes into his own over the course of the course of this thing. Amiri opens up. Kyra, you know, uh, Kyra opens up. Harsh feels confident as a teacher, have these story elements, but also have them reflected, have this growth reflected in uh, increased um, in, in adventuring efficiency <laughs> and have the combos yeah. improve over time. So really, I can't get enough, I can't get enough of the teamwork that we're, uh, that we're putting into the game. Yeah, yeah. We had, um, we had some other questions coming in about, uh, specifically, we were talking about cutscenes, but cutscenes yeah. and storytelling. Now, the, the style of uh, animation is very we were talking about graphic novels mm -hmm. but we saw in the trailer where we see the rose guard and belcora um though that's the storytelling is that the kind of cutscenes as we see all the way through the story or is that just like the, the intro that's those were those were first attempts right okay. and by first attempts they're really good and very well realized but we're playing with what feels right gotcha uh for the mood and the, for the mood and the style of the game so yeah. it's a that's a that's a trailer that reflects a lot of our a, a, yeah. a lot of our early work on that and we're still developing it as cool. we go fantastic and the gameplay there we, as well we, we were talking about the music where yeah. do you get the music from have you is that an, an orchestra how how big have you gone in terms of sourcing music <laughs> oh excuse me so we work with a we we work with a with a partner studio called uh, called P, uh, pbl audio and they in um in co collaboration with us, they, we put together yeah. the music. So we'll talk about references, and we'll talk about emotional beats, and we'll talk about like big dramatic think, moments. Yeah. And then you know, uh, wow, they just work their bardic magic <laughs> all the way through it, and, and just surprise us when they when they come back when they come back with this stuff. So um, I don't, they don't always reveal their secrets to me, but they have access to a lot of great <laughs> great stuff, and they make really good choices. We also had a question from uh, here we go, uh, Super Soman. Uh, will you have to stick to an iconic all the way as a main character, or will you have the possibility to change? So you'll be able to all the way through play one of the four. So if currently for this particular mission or this particular room or this particular challenge, you want to play as Harsk, 
yeah. and have everybody else follow and you take the lead as Harst, that's great. And then even in the middle of combat, if you're playing alone or if you're playing just with two, you could switch to whoever's not currently being uh, controlled by a player. So you have lots of, and in a, and, uh, in a, in a co-op setting, then we're all playing off the same, off the yeah. same, out of the same group. So, you know, you play my Harsk. If you're not, you were signed into my game, you'll play my Harsk and, and uh, my Ezra and we'll all just play and have fun together and then grow the characters and experience the adventure that way. I like that. I like that one. The, so, um, sorry, I have a quick question. Yeah, um, so, I mean, Pathfinder, uh, as opposed to, to D&D, mm -hmm. you know, I find in Pathfinder the character development, when you get beyond the first level, um, allows you to customise uh, in, in many more mm -hmm. broad range than, yeah. than, you know, than it is in D&D. &D. You know, if you're a wizard in D&D, &D, you're a wizard in D&D. &D. Wizard in Pathfinder, you can go off in all sorts of ways using the archetypes yeah. and the feats. Um, are you going to take those elements of specialisation or... Uh, even even broadening out into other play styles and allowing the players to to use those in the game as they do their their um, character development or, or your growing experience levels. We want to we want to take as many of those elements as we possibly can fit in, yeah, into the game because we want you to we we don't want there to be a singular way to play any one of those characters. We want you to uh, now. In terms of video games, it's very helpful to have sort of a templating process where you can go through and and and, and feel confident that this pre-selected set of choices will result will perform well for you but we're going to let you have so we'll have those like sort of soft guardrails yeah, uh, guidelines yeah. you could play different different elementalist forums or different uh the different schools that uh that Ezra might have for example but we'll also you'll also be able to mix and match and, and, and combo to have the hybrids that approaches that most accurately reflect what you want to do with them and if you want to be experimental and really push uh, a character into into a way that it's not immediately obvious that they can do you will you'll have the tools i think to do that yeah. i mean the pathfinder customization options are are uh, the, the, yeah, are incredible there's <laughs> so many are. different things and so many different paces where you can pick all your which kind of feed at which point which skill point at which point so we're we're going to figure out um, a harmonious way of, of of letting you have that feeling and in, in, in customizing your each which of your is, heroes is, as part of the team. One yeah. of the things I like is again coming coming to the customization. So you you can pick uh, Kira, who's the cleric, for example. Yeah. So she's she's the cleric. She's the uh, iconic cleric from Pathfinder, and there are many more iconics as well. So I've, yeah. I have a two part question, but we still we still with Kira. Is that um, now you you can, she can be the healer of the group. She can turn mm -hmm. the undead uh, and protect the group. So she she can be a controller, or she can be a tank. Yeah. So again, depending on your choices, you can make any of these characters like again, Ezrin. Um, he, in, in my mind, he's a bit of a tank anyway, but he's still a, a backline <laughs> tank. He can, he's yeah. happy to just blow things up. He's great. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, a backline <laughs> tank. That, that's what it is. Uh, but I, I love all that. Again, the customization uh, depended on, and I know you can't talk much about it, but depending on on how many layers and levels you can put into this thing. Again, the Pathfinder rule books are. Um, Fantastic. The backgrounds, the feats, the skills, yeah. everything is in there. Uh, there's so, so much in there. To have all of that plugged into a game is just going to be incredible. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And then the iconic question. Is is there a possibility we may see more than these four? <laughs> well, I mean, everything's possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're clearly, yeah, focusing, okay, we're cool. clearly focusing on these ones, but it's a... Yeah. Uh, I mean characterization at at depth it would be it, it would be great i mean there were considerable debates yeah. internally about you know which ones uh, to put in and why we made these choices because you know some people you know love well, that that was I another mean, thing because you didn't go with the tradition you know fighter thief uh nope. warrior wizard uh, we've got we've got a wizard uh we've got yep. a barbarian we've got a yep. ranger um, and then we got the cleric. So yeah. straight off the bat, we're like, oh, okay, what kind of game is this? We're straight yeah, in that's, there. Um, that's it. Now, the, the, the raised eyebrow in your voice is exactly what we're going for. We want to present yeah. uh, the player with an interesting with an interesting combo. The relationships between the characters are also kind of interesting. Um, and then we'll see where you grow from, where you grow from there. Yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm looking for, again, I know it's like 
over a year away, but um, I'm really looking forward to Yeah, I'm biting through the side of my cheek. There's lots of things I'd like to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, please do, please do. Uh, that, that's cool. Uh, I've got, we've got some more artwork to show as well. If you could yeah. um, talk us through some of these, because sure. uh, this, the sculpture, we've got this, all the lighting effects. Mm -hmm. we've, oh, no. We've got, barrels and crates which i'm assuming are going to be destructive yeah. uh there is a ton of stuff here yeah I'm there's, a ton, there's there's a ton of stuff so we're we're, we're building up sections of the uh sections of the naked dungeon piece by piece we're exploring different avenues so there are you know, the upper levels are very very well constructed they look very human livable <laughs> at one point still in ruins so we're playing with we're, we're playing with all these textures um uh, who doesn't like a destructible crate uh yeah. for for finding secrets or looking at things yeah there are the there are sort of the paradigms and tropes of action rpg play that we have uh to uh, to consider as well as the uh, the content of the uh, the adventure and the expectations of a of a pathfinder adventure so we're trying to you know place both both these things here so this is uh you know a fairly typical um uh, you know abandoned corner of um of one of the floors and then from there we'll figure out what's required to make this look more like the library level or what this would look like if it was in a more gladiatorial mm. range so uh i mean what, what are so some of the challenges with all these... i mean so, like these these Damn. sections here this is just oh yeah so uh yeah so we're in the, so we're in the dark lands here <laughs> and uh we're just how do we create an environment that feels um you know dangerous yet beautiful that really it that really yeah. draws the eye distracts you from things that will then come up and bite you you know yeah. there's there's <laughs> uh, quite, a, quite a few of those mushrooms are are are, uh, are poisonous that it would be an interesting exercise to have you guess which ones you think they are based on the still image because foreshadowing and uh, affordances are a big part of what goes into like the concept work yeah. and the modeling work you know uh can you see where the paths are going can you yeah. are you already tempted by something further ahead through the branches these are all the sort of the staging challenges and this comes up you uh you were talking about like size of the spiders vis-a-vis -vis yeah. the size of the heroes also just the position of the camera and and and, and how we're going to play with um you know zooming in and out as you wander as you spread apart you kind of want to keep everybody looking at this at the same part of the screen at the same time there's a lot of there's a surprising amount of uh, of, uh, of of geometry and architecture that goes into this kind of this kind of level design this is a beautiful we just call this part like our beautiful corner <laughs> just it's, it, a, it's, it's a nice, lovely wow it, factor it, it's uh, as you say because you want to go you know it's going to be deadly you know there's going to be monsters there but you still want to explore but that's that's the heart of fantasy adventure is to explore yeah. um because you never know what's going to be around the next corner i mean the, the, well, it's, it's, it's always looking for the hidden things isn't it and that's yeah. what you find yourself doing yeah. Um, when you see a stage like this, you know, it, yeah, there's, there's going to be something hidden. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, the, a secret is... path or something like that. Always, always, <laughs> there's always something to look. And then, and then, and then, so that'll be also an interesting uh, design and, and production challenges, right? Because you have, yeah. you know, perception, you have specialties, uh, you have environmental awareness, but you are physically you a person playing the game with your eyes and with <laughs> the screen resolution that you've got so how do we make you feel that you your this character that you're controlling has the insights to find secret things that you might have missed as a person or vice versa how that all feels um seamless while you're playing yeah so I, here we I, go uh more spiders so sorry dave but yeah no I, I, we, again we were talking about this before we went on and i was thinking that they look like so to the to the bottom center of the screen they yeah. look like spider eggs to me and i'm just hoping that we can fireball them and they go pop 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 pop, pop. <laughs> um because that's the first thing i'm gonna do now would you like uh, them gonna... to pop and have spiders emerge no i hate <laughs> that would you like to anger them or <laughs> no no i mean you, you never want mummy to come along that's that's yeah. the first thing but you want when you destroy an egg you want you, you want it to explode with a load of goo but you never want the baby to come out and go oh i mean now i'm going to attack that's you. exactly what happens when you when you when you do explode a spider egg <laughs> they just run out in a yeah, swarm yeah, you're better off the... just leaving them alone that's the really real world. I don't, this is the fantasy <laughs> world where I'm the hero. Okay, that's where we're get we're getting that. So as the hero, we should face you with we should we should turn it up a notch because we know you can handle it. 
Yes, well, okay, sure, sure, fair enough. Okay. You got me there. You got me there. I, uh, I uh, more spiders, ask... cave approves. Done. <laughs> yeah, I, I still don't approve of spiders. See, see so, that spider glitch. That's what yeah. Going for. Um, so in terms of, yeah, you mentioned uh, the maps and the the kind of the the uh, the levels you have to go to yeah. and and the journey and different pathways. Do you get any supervision or guidance from Pezo from Pathfinder? Uh, any existing maps or uh, did you have free reign to create go even more so it's an, so uh it's not we're, we're going even more we it's an ongoing conversation mm. with peso like they're they're it's, it's terrific working with them they're great partners for for the creative side of things because uh you know we'll we'll say we'd like to do these things and here's why and how does it kind of fit because yeah Practically, we don't want the uh, the adventure path to be the video game playthrough and, and go, yeah. you know, too close to it. We want to say we want to fill in some of the the blank spaces on the map. We want to imagine that things get, you know, possibly repopulated or there's an extra bit to yeah. explore. This is very easy to say in the Darklands, right? Because it's vast and enormous, and yeah. the map covers what it covers, but you can you can explore. So we're yeah, we're always pushing for what we need for you know a really fun. Uh, and memorable gameplay experience, and enough, um, and enough room to do all the monsters justice. Really, to make sure that we, you know, see them and and uh, and, and really have a moment to run away from them <laughs> before we figure out how to beat them. It's always the quick runaway. We we have a, another question here as well. So this sure. is McGuire review again. Uh, let's bring it up on the screen. This yeah. is a big question. So oh, here we go. How are your development teams structured? Do teams of folks develop all the way from main menu screens to levels, or do you have teams that specialize only in certain aspects of the game? Um, how how is it broken down? How many different teams do you have? How many oh, people yeah. have worked on this game? <laughs> well, that I can't really that I can't really say. The the team because the teams come and you know grow and 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 and, and shift as as uh, as things come up. So we have the departments right you know in, in art and all that encompasses you know vfx yeah. and animation and all that and 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 uh, various specialties of uh programming and and development and design narrative design what have you uh user experience design and ui design yeah. comes into play in terms of art and and engineering and so what we do uh normally in, in in game development and this has been true for most of my career is we'll have uh feature specific strike teams on it so we just say you know, this is what we're working on now. Everybody bring your knowledge to the table. Let's make the best version of this that we can. Yeah. And uh, and off we go for it. Because what do we know? We know why it has to look a certain way. We know why it has to feel a certain way. We know uh, what the technical challenges are. Like, don't make something so vast that we can't load. <laughs> and, the, like, the game stalls as you as you cross one threshold, which is a thing that happens at the prototype stage, at the prototype yeah. stage all the time. And you want to identify that. So, um that so we have our we have our individual disciplines and we're kind of organized like that what's designed working on this time because we want to start working on features and then we have a very feature by feature focus on uh, where things go and then that gives us as we set the baseline um for things then we have then we can go back and you know improve as we as you progress and you find better and better ways more and more efficient ways of doing things you'll go back to the things you did first and and and, and tweak them and bring them up to uh and bring them up to stuff to stuff that's the wrong way of saying it but just like bring them all up to the same level that you've discovered that you could reach after I, I, a lot of teamwork but th that's the kind of thing i like and you mentioned there about uh, uh the bigger areas so once you've cleared it out i i don't like the games particularly because I, I like games to challenge me <laughs> um but yeah a vast cavern surrounded by hordes of spiders and all kinds of whatever you think you might you might see um is a case of uh when you travel back you think i've cleared it out it's safe it's not there, there are creatures creatures on the ceiling they've come down all these things can happen to, to refill a space and that that's the bit i i like yeah. that yeah. nowhere's nowhere's safe um we're also to point out to people know. that the um the the game abomination yeah. vaults you can find it, uh, add it to your wish list now yes, on please. Steam. So again, put it on there and there's, there's more trailers, there's more artwork, there's more there's kinds trailers, of There's trailers, there's artwork. There. I think there's, um, 
yeah there's other there's uh, there's other bits and other descriptions that we've uh, that we've put on as as we develop pieces of the game and you know this is done <coughs> excuse me this was done you know through through kickstarter so we we've shared things with uh you know with backers at, at, at various levels yeah. over time and eventually it trickles down and gets to the um and uh and gets to the steam page so please yeah do uh wish list um you can even back i, I believe you can even back the project late wish list come uh come on board cool the fantastic bits and pieces now also we did, we spent a lot of time on abomination bombs because <laughs> I, again, I'm a big fan, a big fan of the AP. Uh, I want to mm -hmm. see this. I want to see this brought to life. Um, uh, potentially, we might even finish the game before we, before the game comes out. So it's about we get to play it again. So the next game, yes, uh, and this is another thing I'm looking forward to because this is out very very soon. The next yes. game is Galaspire Survivors. Galaspire Survivors again, Pathfinder. Uh, what can you tell us about this one? Again, we've got some we've got some screens to show. Sure. Um, if you talk us through some of these bits and pieces that you know about, let's... yeah. So uh, this was this was put together by uh, by another team. I did, uh, you know, I, I I poked my head in from uh, from time to yep. time, but there was you know a new game to show. Uh, was a lead designer on it, and there was there's whole development team for it. It was in um, early access for a yep. while on Steam, and uh, that was really impressive because it really engaged with the community and there were improvements and new features like this card collecting system that was introduced yep. over the course of early access. And it's about to be, uh, you know, now after early access is over, version 1.0 is officially launching on April 4th, if I am not wrong, and I'm looking at my chat log to see if anybody's nope. correcting me. That is <laughs> I think that, I believe that's it. And, and also, if anyone in the audience uh, already works at, at Become Studios and you want to throw uh, Stephen a trick question, please put it in chat. That, that'd be fine. Uh, if, go for it. Let's let's see what he knows. Um... So, so I mean, this is uh, this is uh, Tyrant's Grasp yeah. adaptation of the um, of uh, that great Tarbathon uh, adventure path um, that's available. So you know, you you are one of you you choose a hero one of the classes, and then you bring another hero in as your companion, which is sort of the innovative, uh, one of the major points of innovation uh, in this genre of sort of bullet hell or bullet hell heaven gameplay. So yeah. you level up yourself and your companion, and you make your uh, choices based on the on the power ups and things you have, and then you take on incredible amounts of enemies. And this I mean, is a it, terrific it, challenge for just readability. But there's a yes. logic to every puddle ring, colored ring, flame yeah. vortex and when you get into sort of what i like about these games is that you get into kind of a, like a flow state and you're just you know if you drive real fast <laughs> and you can yeah. things sure, whip sure, sure. by but you know what they are because you're just you're just there and you just know you you hit you hit that rhythm i think in this type of game uh uh pretty quickly it's it's a, it's a real <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's really fun to play and then you're like oh where did my time go i'll play one more <laughs> that felt fast i'll play one more and then off you go so we've got a treasure chest, right, that you have to be in proximity to for a certain amount of time before it opens, uh, which is tricky when everything's trying to kill you in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's... That, that, that's what I wondered about, is, you know, the different items, the collectibles, different things mm -hmm. in this game. This, it looks, uh, compared to Abomination Vaults, which are, in my head, I see as I can spend time to rest. I can, I can choose to go ahead or not. Like, we saw the passages there. Mm -hmm. This... I don't think you get time to think or even breathe. I think they're going to come at you hard and fast, and you just have to survive. I, um, I think in, 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 in one of these slides, uh, there's a series of like little mini missions, little little quests that you have during your gameplay sessions. And there's one of them that says, stand still <laughs> for X seconds. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I hope we count to the millisecond because that's not likely. It's really, yeah. it's really, it's really fun to... Uh, to have those things and then you, so you have your active quests with you know, with rewards of, for, for coins and rerolls and gems and in and, and, and various currencies it's it's really fun and these things i like this is that um they they they, they feel pathfindery not everything is one-to-one -one pathfindery but they feel yep. pathfindery in the types of you know naming conventions and uh, and boosts that that they give you for your collections well, i want to go back to this screen because this screen yeah. we see again i i'm a i'm a huge fan of the encounter cards from oh yeah Pathfinder. but these um we see underneath the zombie hulk there and it mm -hmm. says that if you you can upgrade these powers as well so once you yeah. have that card you're gonna and um you get damage dealt to zombies and skeletons is increased yeah. there you get plus one percent but you can upgrade that card yeah 
I love fighting the undead. Um, it, it's those things, and uh, the more that you collect, the more powerful your characters are going to be, which I which I think is uh, a yeah. lot of fun. You have a complete collection. You have a deep collection. You always you're always happy when you come to across to the altar or the chest or the statue or wherever the the cards come from. Like there's always a reason to go look in here and figure out what the in that game like this incremental boosts mean the world, yeah. Yeah. right yes. for your success, and that's uh, that's what we want to play with. So are they oh. are they completely gen generated on a random drop basis. Yeah, I mean, so far as I I believe they're they I believe they're entirely random. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's possible that there are, it's possible that there may be thematic by the depth of the dungeon. So it might be that a certain tier of things might only be present. And this is me making up stuff. So don't be mad at me, Ali. I'm saying this to my, <laughs> <laughs> my team. it's, 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 there's lots of, there's lots of ways as me wearing a game designer hat to plan these things. I believe it's a, I believe it's a random drop and there's, but there's always an interest in making things, uh, you know, feel logical. Oh, I saw this monster. Now I start yeah, to collect that. Yeah card but also foreshadowing i saw that card yeah. does that mean this monster is here how yeah. worried should i be there's lots of ways that uh, the team has played with those uh, well yeah i mean that, that's that's a uh, that's a great point because you get the card and then you go oh no that's in the game is that this is because talking this is I, I i mean you can't see the hat but i am completely talking through it on that point yeah. it's just it's exciting to see all the game design uh, um challenges <laughs> and uh and ch i mean challenge in the best possible way like it's really fun to have yeah. this uh have this problem uh presented to you going, okay so we, we have these things how many ways can we play with expectations and and, and build them up gallus fire team is uh, is terrific fantastic now we have uh for, for everyone who's watching uh again thank you so much if you have any last questions we're getting into the last few minutes now so get your questions out uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, if you have questions, stick them in the comments below and I'll send them over to Stephen and hopefully we can get the answers for you. Damn. We've got another little sneak peek at a trailer for you. Uh, this is for Gallus Spies. We're going to put this on and uh, enjoy it. And we've got some more questions when we come back. See you in a sec. Gallus Spire. My seat of power and my prison. This is no place for heroes living or otherwise you dare step foot within my domain to challenge the power of the lich king tar Baffon? do you honestly think bringing a companion along will delay your demise you shall both make fine additions to my legion oh my little pawns your presence here can only delay my return you will die here, alone and afraid, consumed by darkness. Your tale shall never be told, as there will be no Gallospire survivors. Wow, that is, it is phenomenal. And again, great voiceover. Do you have like uh, the same voiceover actors for the, for different games or the same games? This uh, is we... where Stephen tells us that somebody works in the office that does it. <laughs> that would be really cool. What's your what's your job? Like... My job is to say in a word. Yeah. No, it's uh, we 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 work with <laughs> we work with casting agencies and we work with again our various audio partners uh, and. Uh, Voice acting is amazing. It adds so much uh, depth and, and uh, depth to the game, and it really sets it really sets the mood uh, for everything you play. That uh, that Targophon uh, is incredible. I mean, yes, we'll we'll to mock it up. We might record stuff internally, and then you know burn the tapes before they ever see the light of day, just to see <laughs> what it's like to have the system. But That's once you get do. real voice acting in, it's super. It's super fun. So in a time, voice acting is something that's going to be present, of course. Oh, I'm talking about everything, yeah. I'm sorry. But voice acting is something that's going to be present, of course, and, and uh, yeah. Abomination Vaults as well. We, uh, we got a... We, go sorry, oh, so we, we do have a question, and it, yeah. and it, went, and it follows the question I was going to ask as well, actually. So uh, Undead Corp says, is Gallus Fire Survivor support on, on Steam Deck? And yeah. then from, from the trailer, it looked like it was on Xbox. And from some of the images, it looked like it was on PlayStation. So, are, you know, are, are you having a multi-platform release? Yes. 
there's i'm not i'm not sure if everything's coming out at the same time the right, steam yep. official release is, is happening on on the fourth and then those other elements you know are all uh, are all in the works cool very cool cool uh, but yeah i did a lot of testing for it on the uh, on steam deck so it was <laughs> you can you can see we've got the where is it this this is i love this art piece of artwork as well let's bring this up oh that my goodness yes gorgeous that again um the uh the art style here fantastic yeah i love that yeah that yeah I, it was uh it was it, they did they did a great team like it's I don't have the vocabulary to talk about art the way that it really deserves to be talked about, right? But there's there there there's something so hopeful about it about this this yes. type of art because it could be you know grim and and, and gritty and, and 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 gory in this play, but the style of play is very fluid and fast moving, and there's lots of you're really just seeing the the flash of a blade like kind of constantly for it. So I like this the style that sort of gets it gets me into that game uh, right right away, and it feels like you know they have a chance. Yeah, well, that's it. it. This is their last <laughs> chance, but they they have a chance. Their last chance. <laughs> they, have they have a chance. But it, I, I completely agree. Um, so I, for my day job, I'm a designer. So looking at these things, the artwork is what is what sells. There's an emotional connection if mm -hmm. you if it if it connects because of whatever reason, that's it. That's half the job done. Um, but I'm looking forward to playing it. As we said, it this comes out on the fourth of April. Uh, today, as we film this, this is the 28th of March. So it's it's days away days right away. now. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll it's be playing. One it. week, isn't it? Is that right? Is my maths correct? You can you can have a think. We've got a calendar. <laughs> but I could also, just on the computer. Uh, we, you could do. Yes, it. it's a week away. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All this technology at our fingertips. I just like make things difficult and working it out themselves. Yeah, and then we've got a uh, we've got a final question here, Super Simon. Uh, does Stephen have a favourite class to play in Gallo Spire? Oh, I uh, I almost always start with the rogue, and I bring the wizard as the companion. That's my, cool. that's 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 been my combo of uh, my combo of choice. And what about abomination? Oh, when I when I'm playing, um, yeah, if the beard doesn't give it away, uh, you know, Ezra, Ezra, <laughs> Ezra, 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 Ezra's a thing for for setting things up. Uh, I'm awfully fond of uh, Amiri, though. Uh, you saw some of those ac those acrobatic sword swings. What? Yeah, I mean, and we didn't really talk about there's that. There's many. I mean, there's there's like barbarian, pa barbarian paths. The the, yeah. the the ancestries, the different ways to rage are like yeah. they're fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're having fun designing <laughs> designing them also. It's 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 the swords. So you know, um, one of my favorite games is Final Fantasy. So yeah, that's the, the big anime swords. So I like playing yeah. like, like I just I, think... I just like. Um, I just love the sword. I just love the story behind it. I love that, like, it's such a great statement to the char <laughs> character. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> I know how to use it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Right, so we're going to wrap it up. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I hope I hope you uh, enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, you, the viewers, um, if, again, if we haven't answered your questions, stick them in the comments below on YouTube, and we'll get these uh, fed out to you. For you, the audience, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Stephen, don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to okay. show the the show real trailer again, uh, but uh, everyone, we'll see you again. Well, we'll be back tomorrow, Steve. We're playing some Abomination in for real. Uh, yes, we're playing the tabletop role playing the tabletop game. version of Abomination. What's well, not not uh, becomes uh, computer not game. Not yet. Yes, not say. yet. Not yet. That's correct. Not yet. We, we we're um, going to finish the TCRPG first, uh, so you specifically don't get any spoilers. Cool. Right, we're going to leave you with a show reel, and until next time, we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. After that, not today. <laughs>